Let's go out to Kyle in Jamestown, North Dakota. What's up, brother Kyle? Hey, how you doing, Dr. John? It's uh, pretty surreal being able to talk to you. <laughs> it's surreal talking to you, man. Good to, good to hear from you. What's up, man? Yeah, so I am uh, navigating something that uh, my fiance has brought up, and I'm trying to uh, kind of figure out and kind of wrap my thoughts around it. So uh, just for some context, my uh, fiance and I have uh, been together for uh, five years at this point. We're getting married in September. And she has brought up the idea of, excuse me, uh, has brought up the idea of us uh, sleeping in separate beds going forward. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> Huge fan. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only because uh, I got a whole bunch of reasons, but go ahead. Go ahead. You sound like you're, right. <laughs> you're not a huge fan. Oh. I, I, I'm more so just trying to get my wrap my head around it. So okay. I know from uh, so I know from Emily's side of it, it's purely just based on you know how she sleeps and how I sleep. You know, we've uh, slept in the same bed for a couple of years now, and you know we ha occasionally have like the couple things of you know hogging blankets and you know uh, quit touching me with your feet and you know stuff like that. And I also know that uh, my fiance sleeps better in certain conditions, like she likes to sleep with her head elevated. Otherwise she can get bad acid reflux and have a bad night of sleep versus I prefer to, you know, just lay flat. Um, I know that again, that this is purely just based on, you know, getting a good night's sleep. And I know, uh, you know, it doesn't have anything necessarily to do with anything relationally, but there's a part of me in the back of my head that's thinking that I'm going to be, you know, losing some uh, intimacy with her, okay. um, you know, kind of having those like, you know, little moments at the end of the night where we're, uh, catching up in bed. And, you know, uh, a lot of the times, you know, intimacy is, you know, started in those small moments where we're just laying in bed together and just trying to kind of wrap my head around it. And just, uh, you know, I don't know if I was overthinking this or, you know, how I should approach this. Um, so I, I, I said, I'm a huge fan of it. Um, I ran across a study several years ago that couples who sleep apart actually get better sleep. Okay. And I didn't buy it, so I tried it. <laughs> Dude, it was amazing. <laughs> it was so amazing. <laughs> um, and uh, and it's something we've had to nav. My wife and I have had to navigate because it works the opposite for her. And it's 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 funny. She'll say, "I need a really good night's sleep," and I what that means to me is you got to be in here. Okay. And when I say I need a really like black hole night of sleep. Usually that means I need to be by myself because I, I'm a real light sleeper. And so for us, it's been just navigating, um, trying to get into a rhythm. Now I got this new eight sleep device, which has been magic. A lot of my challenges is I get real hot. And so I like things sub Arctic and my wife likes to sleep, um, in lava. And so like, it's been tough navigating the are like her side of the bed has stacks of blankets and mine has like a sheet of notebook paper on it. Right. And so having this eight sleep, she's a lot, she can, she can warm her side and I can cool my side. But, but again, it's been a negotiation. The question I have for you is beneath that. This sounds like you've got a fear that if you're not, um, put, I'm going to say this and it's kind of inflammatory, but I don't mean it that way. I'm smiling right now. So just know I'm playing. But like okay. that y'all, if you're not put in the same cage every night, there's going to be no sex. And if you're not put in the same cage every night or the same box every night, then you're going to miss out on things. That's what I want to like get a, take a pulse on. What's your fear there? Sure. And I think there's some part of me that, you know, ha you know, I think that's definitely part of it. Um, I think personally for myself, the bigger part of that. So if we were looking at uh, the five love languages, you know, I'm definitely someone that say I really appreciate physical touch, you know, long hugs and just being in the same room as uh, my fiance and just enjoying her company. And right now I'm in a uh, position at work where, you know, we're uh, saving up for the upcoming wedding. And then we also have other expenses coming up where, you know, I'm essentially up and out the door at seven thirty, and coming back at nine p.m. There and we go. Hey, this is it. This is it. This is it. It's exactly what I was hoping you would go to. Okay, exactly. Yep. The bed, that thirty minutes or that hour or that sleep time has become your only source of oxygen when it comes to communication and connection. 
is the only place you tune in and talk to each other. It's the only place you have a chance for what I call accidental intimacy, where you brush her leg or she touches your arm and that leads to a thing, which leads to a thing, right? Yep. And that means we're not being intentional in other areas of our life. Okay. And sometimes putting all the pressure on this one geographical location and this one moment, this one instance puts a ton of pressure when somebody's just saying, dude, I can't sleep. Right. Or it's, it, this happens, especially in houses where people's people have sleep apnea or they snore. And I've talked to spouses who just are in misery, but they think there's somehow their marriage is worth less or they're not intimate or they're not a good spouse or a good partner because they want to sleep somewhere else, anywhere except where there's guys, this guy or this woman has a lawnmower going in the bed. Right. Right. With snoring. And, and that's, and that was kind of the big thing of it too, is that, you know, we're just going to be starting the rest of our lives with each other. And, you know, we're starting off at this point and I was kind of wrapping my head around it being like you had mentioned that, that safe space. And, you know, what is, what does it say about, you know, our marriage? If, you know, my, uh, you know, siblings or anybody else, you know, learns that, Hey, we're sleeping in separate beds. And Who part of that- gives a big box of farts with a, <laughs> with a pony on a stick, brother. I could care less I- <laughs> what my brother and sister and my in-laws think about my sleeping arrangements. Right. I mean, they don't get a vote on that. That was, it, It's going to be what works for me and my wife. It's going to got to be what works for you and your wife. <laughs> if, and I'll tell you, it's a huge red flag for me if you're walking into your marriage already with your head on a swivel, asking yourself, what are other people going to think about the arrangement we've made? Already, you got a problem because you've got other voices speaking into what y'all two need. Already, you have a problem if the only intimacy happens when you have a captive audience. I mean, when you've got a trapped audience. And so I think a bigger question for me is backing out is when do we just sit down and enjoy each other? Do we, do we put intimacy on the calendar? Is that going to be part, we get married, are we going to, are we going to have a planning meeting every week where we put sex on the calendar? Or is it just off limits? Or, and this is a scary question for someone who's been with someone they love for five years and they're engaged and they got a, a wedding on the calendar is, is this the latest in a series of, oh, this is just the way this is going to be? And that to me is a much scarier question to ask. What do you think? Um, you know, thinking it over and really just, you know, evaluating my relationship with Emily in those off times where we're, you know, not, uh, in the same bed with each other. I mean, we enjoy, you know, each other's company and we, you know, go on regular date nights and we, you know, I, you know, obviously think that we have a really great relationship in every other regard. It was just the, you know, one of the things where something that I was looking forward to towards the end of the night. Uh, you know, being again, just continuing to spend that time with each other is all of a sudden just a sudden shift, I guess. Right. I get that. And I think, um, man, this is a terrible word to use, but it's the only one that come into mind. I think that's something that might be negotiated down the road as, as we move into this. Like some nights I need you. No, let's, let's stay away from that language. Some nights I really want to be with you. If you get into the need language, then it turns very maternal very quick. And then it gets, it just, it, it messes up the, the dynamic, but I really want to be with you. Cool. That's going to be our baseline. Maybe the default is, of course, we're going to sleep in the same bed. And maybe once or twice or a couple nights a week, she's going to look at you and say, Hey, I really want a good night's sleep. And you're going to say, cool, we've got a guest room. That's awesome. And I don't think that ne- that I, I, I see nothing that suggests that means your relationship is inherently bad. Or it's, it's somehow less than or it's somehow dysfunctional. Okay. 
And, you know, not to, you know, bring up anyone else's, you know, problems or anything like that. Cause like I had mentioned before, like, I really don't see any issues with their, I mean, every couple has, you know, something, you know, whether it's arguments about this and that, or, you know, something like that. But I My think part of the is thing perfect, is that. Kyle. Mine's perfect. Oh, yours is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close because my wife so married I, a moron. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so maybe part of that. So I uh, grew up around parents that did not have a good relationship. And I've, you know, been around a lot of family members that have not had um, good relationships. And one of the commonalities between the two was the, uh, you know, the couple sleeping in separate beds. And I know that, you know, there's multiple reasons for you know, couples doing that. I just wanted to, I guess, reevaluate everything because, you know, looking from the inside, you know, I think that everything is, you know, great coming into it, but then I have like in the back of my head, like, Oh, okay. Think about, you know, this couple and how they're doing. And I guess it's just been kind of messing with me a little bit. Uh, man, I, I think your I think your inclination's right. I think your body sees a couple sleeping in a separate room and instantly puts an alarm and sounds an alarm. That they're not okay. And if you haven't sat down and explained that to your fiance, I, th I think that's worth putting on the table. Hey, I have a visceral reaction because this couple was awful and I don't want to live that life. And this couple over here, they were brutal to each other. They didn't make it. And one of the things they shared in common was that they slept in separate rooms. So if sleeping in separate rooms on occasion is going to be a part of our future. What do we have to do to make sure we are on rock solid ground everywhere else? And now you're getting into very intimate conversations, very detailed, very, um, that this is you and, and, and her co-creating what your life is going to look like. Not just running a script on it. And maybe when you sit down and have this conversation, she says, I feel like I can't sleep because I have this vampire on me who needs my energy in order to function. Maybe that's it. Or maybe it's as benign as, no, I just am like that dude on, uh, not she's got mail on sleep is in Seattle. And he just like, Oh, he's got snot coming out his nose. He has to sleep all weird and he just makes weird noises. And like, you know what I mean? Maybe it's just that. Maybe it's just simple as, as that. Something in my guts tells me it's deeper than that, Kyle. Am I overthinking it? Am I overreaching here? Cause it feels like there's something else. I mean, not that I can really think of like, okay. And, and, you know, maybe that's something where, you know, if the, that conversation does lead down to, you know, th you know, something that I'm unfamiliar with, you know, that's worth exploring. But at least from my perspective, you know, I don't see anything in that regard. Okay. Um, here's something else I want you to be honest about. This might be a deal breaker for you. Okay. And I don't want you to cash that out. Because equally... The way that sleeping by myself sometimes is life-giving to me. Um, I would find myself very separate from my wife. We would have two different lives if we made it a life, if, if we lived like this all the time, which I would not recommend. And so, um, and, and also equally, another couple might be listening to this and say, I... I, I won't live like that. I want to have the person I'm married to in my bed with me, period. End of story. And so I think everybody has to answer that question for what's going to make them, their bodies go, I'm home. And if, if, if it's just, man, I can't do it. I can't look at, I can't look into the future 25 years and see that five nights out of seven, we're sleeping in different rooms. That doesn't feel like marriage to me. That feels like roommates to me. I'm not, I don't want to be a part of that. I think you got to put that on the table. And then hopefully y'all can figure out, okay, what is it about actual, actually sleeping together in this same bed? That is the problem. Let's try to drill in. Do you need a CPAP? Do you need one of those tempur beds that, you know, one's up, one's down? Like, what do we need? And let's figure that out. 
Does that sound fair? Yeah, absolutely. That sounds fair. Okay. I, I think the it's easy in these kind of situations, and I'm glad you're asking this question because it's easy when we have when we when we kind of feel like we're button heads. It's easy to feel like we're button heads over a thing, over the mechanics of a thing. Occasionally that's true, but often there's something deeper here. Often there's something going on underneath. I've watched couples fall apart, and this was the common denominator for them. Or as a kid, this is what it looked like the common denominator was. Hey, I only feel safe when you're in the bed with me. Hey, I know you don't sleep. What do we need to do? We need to get a, a king size bed. Do we need to get a new bed frame that doesn't squeak so much? Do we need to? What, what do we need to do? Because I need this to be part of our life. Or I just <laughs> need a few nights a week by myself. And I think it's the constant coming back to the table and saying, here's what I want. Here's what I need. Constantly coming back to the table, back to the table, back to the table, and then being willing to open our hands and say, here's what I'm willing to budge on, and here's what I'm not willing to budge on. And then, if there are some things that we are not willing to budge on, exhaling deeply and being adults and asking ourselves a scary hard question, well, what do we do now? But I think there's a deeper conversation here, Kyle, that I'd love you, you and your fiancé to explore. What does intimacy look like outside of this room? What does laughter and connection look like inside this room, outside this room? Where do we make time for each other to just whew, be? And why is sharing a bed so important? Or why is <laughs> you getting out so important? Let's put those things on the table. And chances are the actual sleeping arrangements will solve themselves. 